I know that rotating points isn't something we've talked about. It isn't often done by surveyors, uh, but for septic system designs, I don't uh, have any particular uh, problems with rotating points because I can always bring it back to uh, its true orientation. In fact, this drawing was rotated prior to us doing any work. Uh, I saved the CRD file with the points rotated. But typically when you come in from the field, the road may be at some obscure angle to the way you actually want to present the drawing uh, to the contractor on the finished construction drawing. So I will rotate the points. There is no harm in doing that because we can always restore it. Now we want to add uh, a bar scale. And Carlson's pretty friendly about that. So we come back under Annotate, select Draw Bar Scale, and notice at the command line it's asking us for the horizontal scale. When we started the drawing we specified that scale. It should be feeding it right back to you. We're going to take the default by pressing Enter, and now it's asking us again, do we want to put the bar scale on a separate layer? I'll take the defaults. So you can easily see how the number of layers can escalate very quickly. But I, again, I'll just take the default. And it wants to know how many decimal places we want the numbers shown on our bar scale to have. I always say zero. So we'll press enter. And now it's looking for a location. Uh, where do you want to place that bar scale? Notice we can see the outline attached to the crosshairs. So that's a convenient aid so that you can see where it's actually going to place it. I'm just going to pick right here. And now we have a bar scale at 20 scale. And I just want you to notice something that is a little annoying to me and that is that it will always divide the first segment of the bar scale into five segments. One, two, three, four, five. Now we know that this represents 20 feet from zero to here. Well 20 feet divided by five is not a convenient scale. Uh, when we go from 20 to 40 it's divided it into two segments and of course we know that this middle segment is 30. Not so much with this first portion of the bar scale. That's just a pet peeve. And you'll notice that's the case for no matter what the scale is, it's going to divide it into five segments. We also now should or could add some text below the bar scale. Uh, to aid anyone if we print this so they don't have to get a scale and physically measure it against the bar scale shown on the drawing. Uh, what is the scale? So let's add some text. So let's go draw text. We'll use standard text. Pick a starting point. It asks us for a text height. I'll take the default of two units. And now it wants a rotation angle. I always put in zero. And now it wants the text. So we can type scale one inch equals 20 feet. Enter. And I typically will have to move it. So I'll select the move command. I'll place it there. Zoom extents. So now we've taken care of some more housekeeping issues. And while we're working under the annotate command, I'd like to introduce you to another uh, feature that I use often, and that is tree line. So we come down under the annotate command until we find line types. And then we'll scroll down and we'll see sketch tree line. Let's pick that. Let's just say for argument's sake so that I can demonstrate this that the tree line 
is just outside the contours. Now at the command line it's asking us to pick the first point and then sketch the tree line. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a point and if you start and work your polyline from right to left it will draw the tree line I believe the way you want to see it. Let's try it. So we'll pick that point and you'll notice it's just drawing this arbitrary polyline and I'm just moving along rather quickly and then when I pick the last point it draws that tree line. I'm going to erase that let's say that your polyline isn't quite that continuous so we'll come back to line types sketch tree line we'll zoom in a bit and we'll say it goes from here to here and we're we're gonna hit the enter key which means repeat in AutoCAD and we're gonna pick another point go there press enter to repeat and you can see you can draw your tree lines pretty quickly so that's kinda handy we can also and I'll erase those tree lines it's not unusual for you to shoot the telephone poles let's draw a polyline 2D polyline and we're just going to draw a polyline from here to here. And let's say that represents a polyline connecting a number of telephone poles. But we want to change that polyline to look a little more descriptive. Again, we come back to annotate, line type. And now we want to choose polyline to special line, meaning we want to change that polyline into one of these special lines and that one right there with the ease breaking the polyline at certain distances is representative of an electric line you can see that there are many to choose from telephone sewer water but electric is a common one so we're going to select that and then say OK. It now wants us to select the entities that we want to convert into this new special polyline. Come back to the drawing, pick the polyline, press enter. There, so now we have our electric line. And you can experiment with all these others you can see there's a railroad yeah railroad there in fact there are two kinds of railroad uh, which we commonly use in this part of the country and there are others so that can save you some time now let's add some more symbols to the drawing things that represent test pits and you'll remember we find the symbol library under draw symbols insert symbols and there are a number of libraries that Carlson gives you and you just will have to experiment with these but I know that the test bit symbol resides under the points library and I want that symbol I want my test pit symbol to be about 5 feet in diameter so I'm going to put in 5. If rotation was important to me I would say prompt for rotation but it isn't so I'm just going to take that default it's going to place that symbol on the septic layer and there's one point labeled TP1 for test pit 1 with my snaps on it'll go right to it and it's gonna loop me through this same command until I hit escape or enter so test bit 2 and I 
believe there were three. So there are my test pits. I also want to add some tree symbols that represent my benchmarks. Now this is a personal preference. Some folks use the same symbol for all their benchmarks. Again, a personal preference. I'll just pick this one today. And I want it to be about 10 feet in diameter. And this time I will prompt for rotation just so that you can see how that's going to act. Say OK. It's now looking for a place to attach this symbol. And we'll zoom in and you can see point number two is a benchmark. And now notice what's happened. It's asking me for a rotation angle and it's dynamic. So I can either type in an angle or what I typically do is just, just rotate it until I like it. And we're still in that command. It's looking for another point. So I'm going to give it another benchmark, which I know happens to be over here. But remember, we moved this point 65 and we have a leader to it which conveniently brings us to the point itself. And you notice we've got a label that's in the way, so we're going to have to do some edits to that later. And there happened to be another one. And I'm done, so I'm going to hit Enter. And if you had any other symbols that were important, to the drawing that you wanted to show, uh, you'd place those in the drawing. And earlier, we placed our symbols for some of our monumentation. And you can already see that I'm going to have some problems with my labels conflicting with my lot lines. So normally, and you will find a procedure that works for you, I'll draw some of the key features in the drawing so that I don't have to go back and redo. And clearly our contour labels are going to have a problem. Now let's add some text to this road using another uh, convenient Carlson feature and that's placing text on an arc. And we want the name of this road to be placed right in the center. So we need to draw a line, or in this case an arc, that is going to be the foundation for our curved or text on an arc. So this is how I do it. I'll select draw line. And I'll draw a line connecting the two ends. And then we're going to go back and use that offset command again and we find the offset command under the edit menu offset standard offset and down here it's saying what do you want to do I'm looking for a distance because that's within the chevron so that's the default but we don't want that we want to draw a line through the middle of this line that I just drew so we're going to say T for throw, press enter, and now it's saying select the entity that we want to offset. So you can select either side of the road, and then it's asking us through what point. And with my O snaps or object snap set to on, I'm going to pick the middle of this line, and there it drew that arc parallel to the road edge and in the center.